Hi book lovers, welcome back to my channel. I have a couple romance recommendations to share with you all today. I wanted to recommend some of my all-time favorite small town romance books. I have a couple popular series that I thought were worth the hype. I'll also be sharing my favorite lesser known ones as well. So hopefully you find a new small town romance to love from my list. Starting off with one of my favorite series, The Whole Trilogy just finished this year. It is one of the more popular books that absolutely lived up to the hype for me. I was honestly a little nervous going into the first book because it went viral and everyone was loving it, but it turns out I love it too. It's the Knock Em Out series by Lucy Score. So the first book that I was talking about is Things We Never Got Over. This is Knox and Naomi's romance. I absolutely adore these two. Knox is grumpy hero perfection. Book two is Things We Hide From The Light and book three is Things We Left Behind and all three books are small town romances with a bit of suspense in them. So book one is where the heroine moves to this small town because she has just discovered that she has a niece that she never knew about and her twin sister has bounced so now she has to take care of that niece. The hero very reluctantly gives her a place to stay, gives her a job and these two are so good together. All the attention, the chemistry. I love their banter so much. We do have a hero who thinks that love is not for him, like relationships aren't for him, but then he gets smacked in the face with this heroine and there are a lot of good jealous and possessive parts here too. And since this is the first book, you do get introduced to the whole town, the small town of Knock Em Out. You get to know all these side characters who very much get involved in the romances here. And then book two is about the brother of the hero from book one. He is the town cop and he falls in love with a newbie in town. She is an investigator. She's trying to figure out these suspicious things, trying to track down the bad guy behind the entire series. This one has a more emotional feel to it, like it's not as light and fluffy as book one, but there is the most adorable dog here that the hero adopts. She is this tiny little thing that the main characters find, like, on the side of the road, inside this pipe, so they name her Piper. The heroine is super badass. She is literally tracking down some awful people, and we do get a lot more of the mystery and suspense if you're a fan of that. And then this is the third and final book, the book that just released and wrapped up the whole trilogy. Things We Left Behind was the one that everyone was waiting for because this couple had been teased in the first two books. The heroine is the local librarian. The hero is a self-made millionaire, billionaire. Oh, and also the whole trilogy is about two friend groups. Like we have the guy best friend group, the two brothers, and then this third best friend. And then we have the girlfriend group who become friends throughout the series. So this one is Lucian and Sloane's romance. I call them Slution. And it was so worth the wait. This one is definitely the angstiest out of all three because there's a lot of history, a lot of bad history between the main characters here. They have known each other since childhood and it's been decades since they first met, since they were childhood neighbors and there's been a lot of hate throughout those years. So this one has enemies to lovers and it is so so good, super hot too. Lucian is definitely the dirty talker out of the three heroes, but the whole series is just so wonderful. I love the Knock Em Out series so much. I fell in love with this small town. Like, it's so unique, very idyllic if you take out the whole bad guy situation here, but this is a small town that I would love to live in, love to have grown up in, even though I'm not a small town girl at all. And these books are so funny too, like Lucy Scores writing, her sense of humor is fantastic. My favorite of the three though, I will say, is probably book one. I still love it so, so much. Book three is a close second, and then book two is my third favorite. So this series is popular for good reason. It definitely lived up to the hype for me, and it's one of my favorite small town romance series. Today's video is brought to you by Stephanie Rose and her new release, Raising the Bar. Raising the Bar is about a heroine who has just recently gotten fired and she's trying to escape the city for a small town retreat to recoup and recalibrate. But on the way there, she gets pulled over for speeding by a local cop, one who is very grumpy and very hot. The two hit it off, but because she's only there for the short term, they can only be friends 
with some fake dating because the hero who just went through a messy divorce he asked the heroine for some very public cuddles for some fake dates to get the local matchmakers off his back but what if the heroine's small town stay becomes permanent can the hero be the man that she deserves to find out about claudia and jude's happily ever after grab your copy of raising the bar by stephanie rose you can read it for free on Kindle unlimited i'll leave a link down below for you to check it out a big thank you to stephanie rose for sponsoring today's video and on with the rest of this video and then i'm recommending the lost and found series by katherine cowles so far there are four books but we do have one more in the series left i've only read the first three but i do love them and I have all four books here. This is also another romantic suspense, small town romance series. Like the Lucy Score series is definitely for like a good, fun, hilarious time. But if you're looking for something a little bit more gritty, something super heartwarming, then the Lost and Found series is for you. So book one is Whispers of You. This one is the second chance romance. Book two is Echoes of You. This one is the former best friends to lovers romance. And then book three has Brother's Best Friend, Fake Dating, another second chance romance. This one is Glimmers of You. And then the fourth one that I still need to read is Shadows of You. This one has a grumpy hero and a force proximity. So for the ones that I've read and I definitely recommend in Whispers of You, we do have this angsty second chance romance. The main characters here were high school sweethearts but then they were torn apart when the heroine was shot literally shot by intruders and the hero felt so much guilt over that that he had to leave her and leave town. So the book and the whole series starts off with this intense scene. Catherine Cowles doesn't hold back here. We do get the nitty gritty of it all. And then fast forward a couple years later, the hero is back home, back in town, and he's ready to make things right again. It's angsty and sweet. We have such a protective hero. And also, if you hate miscommunication, then you will love this heroine because she loves to communicate. She was honestly a breath of fresh air to read because she's a character who can share her feelings and tell the hero when he's messing up to his face. So this was fantastic and all the suspense also had me hooked. Book two, Echoes of You, is the best friends to lovers romance. This one, they are former best friends. They're not best friends anymore. The heroine, she had been in love with the hero her entire life, but he never saw her as anything more than a friend, and she knew that, so she decided to leave. She wanted to move away from their small town and build a new life for herself. Unfortunately, she meets a very abusive man, so she goes through a lot of tragedy and trauma until she finally decides to go back home. And then this hero, the dummy that he is, is still wondering why the heroine left left him, left town, why he's feeling all these feelings about her. But he is super sweet and kind and understanding of what she had been through. It's a heartbreaking read, super emotional, but I loved it. It's not the typical kind of friends to lovers romance because both of these characters have been apart for a very long time. So it's like a reunion for them. And the suspense part here this time is with the heroine's abusive ex. And then the last one that I read is Glimmers of You. This was book three and probably my favorite so far because I love this heroine so much. I mean, all the heroines are fantastic. Again, the super communicator in book one, but there's just something about this heroine being so strong and resilient and relatable. I adored her. So this one is the one with all the new tropes. We have a brother's best friend, a fake dating, a second chance romance. It's another second chance romance in the series. We do have a little bit of groveling here. And the funny thing about this is that the hero doesn't just have to grovel to the heroine because of course he does. He broke her heart, but he also has to grovel to their small town. Throughout the whole series, the small town, all of these side characters have been a big part of it, but you get to see it especially in this third book because the whole town has been very disappointed in the hero for leaving the heroine when she needed him the most. So he has a lot of making up to do, right? And they make him work for it. And then the fake dating thing is the hero's whole idea because the heroine's ex won't leave her alone and the hero's dad won't stop hounding him about 
getting his own girlfriend or settling down. Obviously the fake dating turns into something real again and it is so good. I love the suspense here too. It definitely kept me on the edge of my seat trying to guess who was behind it. And then book four is Shadows of You. This is the one with the grumpy hero who decides to move in with the heroine and sleep on her couch to protect her from someone who is targeting her. I still need to read this one but if it's anything like the rest of the series I will definitely enjoy it. But yeah this whole series is fantastic. Catherine Powell's is definitely a go-to when I'm looking for small town and romantic suspense because she does both so well. There's always a good balance of suspense and romance. Another one of my favorite series is the Love Light series by B.K. Borison. I have books one and three here. I don't know where my book two is but book one is Love Light Farms, book two is In the Weeds, and then book three is Mixed Signals. My personal favorite here of the three is Mixed Signals book three. I love this one so so much. It's one of my favorites of 2023. But book one, Love Light Farms, is the perfect Christmas romance or holiday romance. It's set on this Christmas tree farm. We have friends to lovers. So much longing and pining here. The hero has been in love with the heroine since forever and these two are literally the cutest thing together so they have to pretend to be a couple to win this contest for the grand prize cash money they have to pretend to be together pretend to be running this farm together to impress the judge and since the hero is in love with the heroine he sees this as his chance to finally show her that he would be perfect for her stella is a bit of a clueless heroine but i do forgive her because she She's so sweet, but she is definitely oblivious to the hero's feelings about her. But still, if you're looking for a fantastic holiday read, then Love Life Farms should be on your list. Book two is In the Weeds. This one is about that judge, that influencer that was behind the contest in book one. Her hero works on this Christmas tree farm as well, and he is a very grumpy not talkative kind of hero. They have a sort of second chance romance because the two of them did hook up one night but then they never see each other again until she shows up at the farm a little bit later. She returns because she wants to find that spark that she felt when she was doing the contest in book one and of course she finds that spark with the hero and also I did love the fact that the hero as grumpy as he was he could not stop adopting all these pets on the farm. He was just a sucker for all the cute animals. And then book three, my favorite, Mixed Signals. This one was so freaking adorable. It is Pining Hero Perfection. The heroine is the local bakery owner and the hero goes into her bakery literally like every week just so he can get a glimpse of her because he is crushing on her that hard. There's some fantastic fake dating here. The main characters, they decide to do like a little trial run. They date each other so they can figure out why they're not doing well in their dating lives. Unfortunately for the hero, there's an expiration date for them, but he does see this as his opportunity to show him how much he loves her. I mean, I can't not love a book where the hero is just totally gone for the heroine and all he wants to do is make her fall in love with him back. It's so sweet, so feel good. Both main characters are so, so precious. I love these two so much and the whole series is fantastic for something cozy and romantic. Like these are the type of books that you could snuggle up in in your blanket, maybe have some hot chocolate to sip on, sitting by the fireside. These books are that cozy. And then I'm recommending the Getting Some series by Emma Chase. This is a small town romance series that I highly recommend that you listen to the audiobooks because they're fantastic. Book one is Getting Schooled and this one is the second chance romance between high school sweethearts. They've just become co-workers at their local high school, the same school that they first fell in love in. He was the star quarterback back in the day, now he is the team's coach. She was the one who got away and now she is working as the 
substitute teacher in the theater department. He helps her with getting used to this teaching job and they were so fun and cute together. Emma Chase is always a good time. She always does banter and humor so well. Book two is getting played and this one might be my favorite of the series. It's about another hero who also works at that high school. The heroine is a single mom and they hook up one night during summer and they never expect to see each other again until the heroine moves to this small town and she finds out that the hero, the guy that she slept with, is none other than her child's new teacher. Oh, and also she's pregnant. So we have a one night stand, single mom, surprise pregnancy. It was so cute. I always love to see a hero who saw himself as an eternal bachelor, but just falls head over heels for the heroine. And he falls so hard, not just for her, but their whole family. So that one was adorable. And then book three is a sort of hospital romance because the hero is a doctor and the heroine is a nurse and they work together. It's actually super awkward but totally adorable. The heroine has had the biggest crush on the hero for a very long time and he never really sees her until she literally falls flat on her face in front of him at like a grocery store. So that's how they start talking, getting to know each other. It's very, very sweet. They see each other at work all the time and now they see each other outside of it a lot too because they do get sent out by their friends to go to a wedding together. The hero is a single dad. He is a dad of three kids and he was a little funny because he kept feeling like this old predator because he's in his 40s and the heroine is 30. We do get a little bit of a push and pull from him because of this age gap but obviously it's not like a huge age gap but this was great. All the books in the series I had the best time reading especially in audio. Like you can't go wrong with Emma Chase because she delivers with entertaining funny romances. And then one of my favorite small town romances is All Roads Lead Here by Mariana Zapata. This one is more like a small town mountain romance. It's got a lot of the outdoorsy aspect with the camping and the nature. So if you like that in a small town romance, you definitely need to read this one. And also if you love slow burn, Mariana is the queen of slow burn for good reason. So this one is a small town romance between a single dad and his new tenant. The heroine moves to the small town where her mother grew up in so she can connect with her mother after her passing. She rents a place and she shows up only to find out that it was kind of a mistake because she rented it from the hero's son and he is not of age yet and he definitely should not be leasing places out on his dad's behalf. The hero being a grumpy hero very very reluctantly lets the heroine stay on his like land. So there's a ton of amazing forced proximity here. We have an older hero. Mariana Zapata always does the best older grumpy heroes. It was just a very lovely read, a very classic MZ with her slow burn. You definitely get a feel for this small town, for these mountains that the heroine explores. It's a very heartwarming read. And then I'm recommending the Compass series by Brittany Cherry. This series, most of them are small town romances, but not every single book is, so I'll just focus on the ones that are set in the small town in books one and four. The first book is Southern Storms, and this is the one where the heroine moves to a small town after ending her loveless marriage. The hero is the black sheep and the outcast of the town, and he does start off being a jerk to the heroine, like they get off to not a great start. Both of them are very broken characters and after they get over the hero being really cold, they start building this connection, one that they've never felt with another person and it really does help heal them from their losses. Brittany Cherry always writes books that are more on the emotional heavier side and this book is definitely that. It has a typical heroine who moves to a small town to build a new life for herself, but it was a really solid read. I really enjoyed the romance and the secondary characters were great. And then skipping over books two and three, book four is called Northern Stars. And this one was so good. It's a small town romance between childhood best friends, although it's more like a friends 
to lovers to enemies to lovers type of romance. These two went through a lot together. They are the best of friends even though he is the more popular one at school and she's the one that gets bullied but he is so protective over her because of the bullying. I just adored them as kids and then they fell in love growing up through middle and high school but then something happens that tears them apart and the hero leaves the heroine, he leaves their small town and then he eventually becomes this famous A-list celebrity actor in Hollywood. He does finally return home to their small town, but now he hates her. So the book is split into two parts. The first part is when they're kids, growing up, falling in love for the first time. It's so sweet, so adorable. Honestly, this first part was my favorite part of this book. And then the second part is their second chance, them as adults. It's messy and heartbreaking, lots of love and hate in this part, but you get to see them fall in love all over again in this small town and it was really really good. So both these books in the Compass series are pretty intense reads but if you've read Brittany Cherry before then you know how it goes. These two are messy, angsty, small town romances that I definitely recommend. And then I have the Bright Fall series by Ashley Herring Blake on my list to recommend. These are three books about three best friends in the small town of Bright Falls. They're all FF romances and I love the author's writing. All these characters are so well written so well developed. I fell so hard for them. Book one is Delilah Green Doesn't Care. Book two is Astrid Parker Doesn't Fail. And then book three is Iris Kelly Doesn't Date. In book one, we have Delilah, who is not part of the trio friend group. She is the other heroine. Delilah is the black sheep of her family, and she returns home because she's broke and she needs a job. And she gets this new job as a wedding photographer for her estranged stepsister. Delilah's heroine is one of her her stepsister's best friends. Claire is a single mom and she also runs the local bookstore. I love their beginning because when Delilah returns back to their small town, Claire doesn't recognize her but Delilah recognizes Claire. Delilah makes a play on her as a little revenge from when they were growing up and her stepsister and her two best friends would make fun of Delilah. So the romance doesn't have the best beginning even though the chemistry is there right from the start, but there's a lot of growth, a lot of character development, a lot of healing. This book and the rest of the books in the series just have such well-rounded stories. Like this was my first time reading Ashley Herring Blake and I fell so hard for her writing. And then book two is about Astrid who is the estranged stepsister from book one. She does get her own romance after her failed wedding. And this one is like an HGTV related romance because Astrid is restoring this inn and the whole restoration is going to be shown on TV. But the big hiccup in this whole restoration is the inn's granddaughter who is the lead carpenter and also hates everything that Astrid picks out for the house for the inn. So we have a lot of clashing here. These two go head to head constantly and the banter is great. And then the third book about the third and final best friend in this trio is Iris. She's a romance author, but she's dealing with some writer's block for her next book. She's the one of her friend group who is anti-relationships. She is a free bird. She doesn't ever want to be tied down. So she goes to Portland to have a one night stand, which ends up terribly. And then she tries out for a play and of course she comes across that same one night stand. There is some fake dating here as well. They pretend to be girlfriends but the thing about this one is that it is also set in Portland so it's not entirely small town. I'm still gonna recommend it because it's still kind of set in Bright Falls, but it is the least small towny of the three books. I do highly recommend them all though again. Ashley Herring Blake's writing is fantastic. I think this was her first time writing like adult books, adult romances, and she definitely knocked it out of the park for me. Another one of my favorites is The Inn on Sweetbriar Lane by Jeannie Chin. This one is also inn related. I feel like inns and small towns kind of go hand in hand, but this one is a very heartwarming small town romance. It takes place in the fall. It is perfect for a cozy fall read. The heroine owns a bed and breakfast and the hero moves in right next door in their small town to open up a bar. They don't get along at first. It's got like enemies to lovers vibes just because the hero, he 
is a huge grump. But then the main characters are forced to work together to bring in business, to help each other out during the autumn festival. Like there's literally a pumpkin festival going on in this small town. How much more small town can you get here? The romance is so great though, like they don't get along at first, but then after being forced to work together, being in close force proximity, they learn that there's so much more to the other person. Also the heroine's family is fantastic, they all run the bed and breakfast together. And this one is a type of small town where the members here are a little bit too nosy and not the friendliest. Like there are some residents here who are not happy that the hero is opening up a bar, but the heroine goes off on them. So this one was great. It's definitely more of an underrated small town romance that I need more people to read. And then speaking of underrated, this one is an older book that I don't see people talking about ever, but I loved it. It's called Sweet Tea and Sympathy by Molly Harper. It's the first book in the Southern Eclectic series. It is set in this southern small town. If you're in the mood for something sweet and funny set in a small town, then this is going to be perfect. Though I will say this one does lean more towards woman's fiction, chick lit, but I still loved it so much. It's about a wedding planner heroine who was raised by her mom and her stepdad and then she gets the biggest opportunity of her career. But then this incident involving flamingos and shrimps kind of tanks her career. So she's left with nothing until a woman comes out of nowhere and tells her that she is her aunt and that she has a whole family on her biological dad's side in this small Georgian town. She finds a new job at her family's company, which is a funeral home slash bait shop because of course, why not? There is a wonderful romance with a widowed single dad of two little girls. He is the local school principal, but the story is still very much about the heroine's journey, about her building a new life for herself, getting to know this small town and all of its quirky residents, and then building a new relationship with her estranged dad. Everything about this book is just so feel good, so adorable. It definitely makes you want to grab a cup of sweet tea while you read it. And then for my final small town romance recommendation, it's from one of my favorite authors, if you didn't know, Book Lovers by Emily Henry is a small town romance. Okay, so both the main characters are from a big city. They're both from New York City. They work in New York City, but they're currently in this small town in the middle of nowhere, North Carolina, for some time off. They've never been the biggest fans of each other. Like you could almost call them enemies, but not quite that. And they keep bumping into each other in this tiny town because there's only so many places here. So they do run into each other a lot. There's a lot of forced proximity. They both work in publishing. The heroine is a literary agent and the hero is a book editor. They do grow closer together though when they start working with the same author. Honestly, their banter and their wit was chef's kiss here. Like Emily Henry and her writing, her sense of humor is always top tier. I was feeling all the good feels for the romance here, but it does get a little emotional. Like there is another plot with the heroine and her straining relationship with her sister, but everything was great. I had such a fun time reading it. The romance had a slight slow burn feel to it. Like yes, there is a ton of banter between the main characters, but the romance does take its time to develop. And it's all set in this cozy little small town. So those were some of my favorite small town romance books. Definitely add them to your TBR if you haven't read them already. If you have read some of them though, let me know your thoughts. If you have your own small town romance recommendations, please share them. I'm sure I'll get some Elsie Silver comments. So I am reading more of her books and continuing with her Chestnut Spring series. So maybe she'll show up in another small town romance video if I make another one. As always, links to everything will be down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye!